Hey, what's going on, guys? I don't know why I sounded like that. But, uh, yeah, um, so I'm going to try to be quick because i got to go to work. But uh, my, pre my bulk uploads ran out, so I'm, I'm uh, casting. We are going to change my sound to come through my headset instead of my speakers so we don't have... So we don't have feedback. So, um, all right, a few things to talk about while we're loading up. Number one, I have been um, kind of, kind of torn when it comes to uh, doing this uh, this Japanese um, tournament analysis and the like, commentary and stuff. Because on one hand, I want to practice commentary, and I think I'm good at commentary. Number two. I want to practice analysis, and I think I'm good at analysis, and you can't really do them both. So what I'm going to do, this is the Grand Finals of Splatted Cup, um, and I'm going to do a normal commentary of Grand Finals, no pausing, no any of that for these videos, and then afterwards, I'm going to go through and do a slower um, analysis, uh, you know, where I rewind, I watch stuff, I try to figure stuff out, of all the videos that are uploaded for said tournament. So this is Grand Finals. Um, again, I don't, I typically don't use, um... Japanese players' names because I get them wrong. I recognize them by their open rec avatars and stuff like that. But we're starting right out here on Airwana Mall. Uh, really a quick opening for uh, for Blue Team right now. As uh, this last Ten Attack Alive is trying to make something of the situation. Well, his teammates are responding. He's been actually surviving for a really long time. Unfortunately, he gets taken out in this little bit of a split spawn situation for his teammates pushing back in. So this Stingray is only going to have two members to support. Uh, we see the Slasher Deco working towards Baller. Everyone actually doing a pretty good job at staying alive right now as we do have four members up. More specials on the side of Yellow Team. Here comes the Baller. The hammer's ready and an Inkjet's going off. Let's see what ends up happening. It looks like Yellow might take the zone. No, not with these bubbles. Uh, hammer causes a trade and in the end it's a 3v2 situation for Blue. They keep the zone. No penalty is going to be a big deal. Right, and once again, we have a Stingray that doesn't have the most support a little bit early, but it seems to be working out. Slasher Deco gets a pick, Tenatech gets a pick, and it looks like they're actually going to be able to get that penalty. It seemed like they were in real danger of having everything go poorly. Now they have that penalty to work with. The game's changed a lot. Now they have breathing room to work with. Now they don't have to be desperate and kind of uh, jump into a, a set-up enemy team. And we'll see how they're able to make this work with only uh, 40 seconds left on the clock before they are uh, in the lead. It's actually looking pretty good for them. Now they have to deal with their first... Uh, attempted a retake. Stingray goes off. Missiles go off. No penalty yet, though. And it looks like Blue was, wasn't really able to push in that much. But once this tent gets in the zone, that'll be good. But However, the Kensa Mini's going to put an end to that. Here comes Vuya Bomb. Will this be a cap? No. And it looks like Yellow might take the lead here. Yeah. 2v1 situation in mid that Mini's not really going to be able to do much. As he gets chased down by the splatter shot. Who will win the 101? The splatter shot will. And this is looking really big for Yellow. So it looks like they were going to lose at first. They are actually able to do a good job at uh, making that comeback. Really good retake attempts, a little bit sloppy at first, but is it going to be end of the game? Yep, so that's going to be game one. That's going to be game one. So that was uh, that was pretty interesting. I think um, I think some of the Stingrays from Yellow were a little bit mistimed. I think that their, their retakes could have been better, especially the earlier attempts, but that last attempt, once they got hold, um, they did a really good job at not dying to the enemy's uh, Stingray, and they, they basically just 0-100 to 100, uh, comeback from that one. Um, I think the Kensa Mini dealing with the uh, Tentabrella, um, which is like a reason why Kensa Mini is run, is a big part of why that went the way it did. All right, so let's skip ahead. Let's skip ahead. We're, we, we skip ahead here because I have work. <laughs> so we are heading into uh, port. Probably zones because it's uh, Splat Zones JP is the channel, and I haven't seen anything aside from Splat Zones on this channel. But could be wrong. No. All right. So now we're looking at the port. So if we wanted to analyze Stingrays last time, do we have some Stingrays to pay attention to this time? We have a Slow to Slasher coming out. Vanilla Brella, uh, a little bit of an unexpected uh, change of comp here is considering the map. We still have, um, we still have that Kensa Mini rocking uh, what seems to be a, a pretty solid build. No Stealth Jump, which is interesting, interesting to, uh, to see on a Kensa Mini. And right now, Yellow, oh, that Tana Tech is a really nice pick on the Brella. Um, Plays like that to let you overcome a bad matchup are always pretty big, but the rest of yellow does get taken up by blue. So once again, a uh, strong opening for blue. Let's see if they're able to uh, to do, well, I mean, as good of a job as last time, right? They did a great job holding the zone. It was just the one time that yellow was actually able to get control. Their hold was just that much better. So we'll see how this ends up working out. This guy working on missiles right now. 
as a Booyah Bomb is uh, going up to try to defend Zone Stinger going off. Counter Ray starts now. A little bit later, but it looks like Yellow's going to get the pick. Yeah, Yellow Ray does win the Stingray battle. However, some teammates do go down. It's a 3v2 situation right now in zone. They do, are able to get zone. They're able to get another pick. It's just the pro left, and he gets taken out as well. Um, so a little bit similar to last time. That Ray was a lot better from Yellow this time. He popped the Ray, he moved, and he uh, took out the counter Ray. So that was... Uh, actually, we didn't even see any counter Ray situations last time. Uh, but we'll see how this ends up working out right now. We're seeing a lot of pressure on Blue as they're trying to push back up. But Blue has a Ray before Yellow this time. Never mind. Blue does end up winning the counter ray situation there, so really good uh, awareness from Blue to know exactly where and how to ray. Uh, Yellow did did definitely. I think Yellow was aware, but it does end up working out. And Blue is able, however, to stop that attempt at using Inkjet. And a little bit, um, a little bit strange to see Tanatech uh, being used. I did hear some talk about uh, Tanatech not being the right choice in a tournament. Maybe that'll be this set. Maybe it won't. I don't know because we're we're back a couple weeks. Um, we have a couple weeks of uh, matches from this channel. Uh, to to co to catch up on, and I'm gonna take my time. I want this uh, I want this Japanese tournament commentary to be a, a big part of my channel for a while, so I don't wanna I don't wanna use up the resources faster than I need to. Right now, we see a burst rush going off using the max range bomb range. However, his teammates don't really seem to be in the best position to follow up on this. Uh, Kent's and Mini dealing with a flank. Stingray going off now. The slash deck actually goes down. But there are some members that can take advantage of this and get zone. They do so once again. They get a penalty, but not in the uh, not in the best situation, right? I mean, uh, they, they haven't really been able to to get to get that lead. That all being said, while I was saying that they were able to push forward pretty far in a way that's going to make this penalty very easy to get rid of. Let's see if they do take the lead. They should. Yes, they do. Enemy team uses missiles now. Some of these specials are getting blown a little bit early. I'm not going to lie. Um, oh, actually, that missile did. Did it get used early? I thought I saw missiles going up. It might have been bombs, but uh, that missile is slightly better. But that is a trend that I have seen, uh, nonetheless. You know, even if I got some of them wrong, that these specials being popped a little bit early. Now blue does end up taking the zone. Yellow stinger goes off again, not with the best support, but he does get one pick, and that's really important for this ten attack staying alive in zone. And as you can see, the um, the ray was kind of aimed like directly at his teammate in those situations, right? That's kind of a, a nice way to use Ray, you know, if you don't know exactly what to do, just aim at your teammates. And this pro getting the picks right now, so this looks really scary for Yellow Team. Blue is working on pure points, no penalty. They have a very strong push-up. They have a Booyah Bomb, which of course has multiple potential uses in a situation like this. Blue definitely going to get the lead now, but will Yellow be able to push up and do something about it? The Booyah Bomb just kind of popping off right now, waiting for anyone to push up, and this is looking really difficult for Yellow. Lance takes out the Inkjet. Hammer goes in the zone. No, it doesn't even get in the zone. Get some picks, but that's not going to be enough. Dipping low and playing meta. <laughs> I've been playing some K-Pro, man. It's not, it's not bad to play K-Pro. I just need some better builds. Oh, that reminds me. I gotta... Can I make the, uh... Can I make the shirt now? Um, alright, so we have one game to one. Um, yellow showing a, a stronger start, but less success this time. And we are looking at Mako Mart. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. Off stream, I am going to uh, make an Ninja Squid shirt. So that is uh, that is what's up. Get off of there, and we can actually skip this head a little bit more. Oh, we can skip this head a lot more. Where you at, Merch? It's okay, guys. Everything is going, uh, is going fine. Why do I have that? What is that shoe doing? Do I need that shoe? I don't know. We're going to have to look at it later because the game's starting. All right, here we go. Make a mark. One game to one. Uh, let's see, we have Slosher Deku coming out, we have the Brel. So these are all weapons that we know these guys can play. Um, Firefin's a new addition, but not a surprise. Firefin really common in Japan. And, you know, considering the rest of this team comp, they kind of need uh, something that can take some another backliner. So if he just, you know, is hard charger, Firefin seems like it's going to be it. Stingray going off very early right now. Let's see if it gets any picks. Uh, the Firefin does jump out. A lot of people jump out, so this is completely abandoning the zone. The Mini is the only one that doesn't jump out, and he gets taken out for it. 
Oh, will this Inkstorm lead to any more picks? I hope not. They did a good job of jumping out and getting taken out in the situation afterwards. It would be kind of a shame. They do stay alive, though. They do get three specials and a pick, so this is probably going to be a zone take for Yellow. Here comes the Baller. Here comes the Ink Jet. Um, here comes the Bomb Rush. I mean, honestly, not even all those were needed. That bomb, that zone take was kind of... Like, kind of like... Like... What's the word that I'm looking for? Oh, gosh. Guaranteed. The zone take was guaranteed, so maybe they could have even saved some of those specials um, for dealing with uh, Blue's counter push later. Let's see how it ends up working out. Yellow um, doesn't seem to have any specials yet. The Brella does throw an in Ink Storm into zone and start working on painting. Um, Brella's a fun weapon. I've been playing a lot of 83. Um, it's kind of cool to see uh, how, like, how Brella's kind of can approach situations differently. And man, that... That was a strong ability to one on one right there from that Brella's Brella doing work right now, push, putting pressure on this charger, making him jump out, jumping this person in zone. Uh, teammate ends up helping out right now, and that is going to be map control for blue 3v3 situation. No specials left, uh, specials yet. We have uh, at first array, which gets popped immediately. A uh, nice way to put on some pressure. Maybe if he gets his pick, he'll make sure that no one uh, gets any specials in return. However, uh, members of yellow do once again do a good job at jumping out. So, um, they're going to be able to have these specials. Missiles going off from both sides right now as this Bomb Rush does attempt to paint zone, but doesn't really get the cat by itself. Um, really no specials in this game can, can just solo paint zone that easily. Uh, even things like Bubbles can have trouble if they're fully contested, and that Bomb Rush did not really, um, provide any means of, uh, getting in. So, it uh, looks like Blue is going to once again be able to, to, to get the lead here, and there's no penalty going off, but... Baller does go off with the help of some support. He does push up here to the right side of our screens while the Mini and the Brella are kind of in a one-on-one. -on -one. So a lot of uh, scattered fights going on right now. Missile's going off to add more chaos to it, but it looks like Yellow's going to be able to come out on top, at least for now. Uh, 3v4 situa 3, 4v3 situation for them. The Brella finally does get a pick. But with this bomb rush going off, with these missiles going off, he's going to have to back off. The, the Ink Storm is on zone. Let's see if Yellow's able to hold it. They really don't have that much time left until they get the lead, but no, penalty for blue is going to be a pretty big play right there. Brella's staying alive for a while, and man, Brella's... I was going to say Brella's really hard to deal with, but... In this case, we, um... We see the uh, Brella get taken out, so once again, Yellow is in control, and it seems like Yellow kind of is having more control in general in this game, but they're not really able to kind of stave off the, uh, the penalties, and on a, I mean, I want to give some credit to the Brella, you know, like... Brellas are really hard to stop when they just want to brute force something, right? And a lot of these Splat Zone comps come down to the ability to stop penalties from happening. That kind of seems like like Splat 2 kind of having like a slower meta than Splat 1, whereas Splat 1, it's just, you know, if you just outslay like crazy, um, you can you can hold mid longer. But in Splat 2, where it's like slower pace, I mean like, you know, if, if you can hold for a really long time and just get some get picks over time, you'll be able to keep the lead right, but if you can't stop that periodic zone take, it's just like, you don't have many more opportunities to do something, so that's uh, just something that, a feeling that I've kind of noticed doesn't quite make the most sense when I say it out loud, but I, I see it happen a lot, but right now, Blue has been holding for a while. Let's see if they're able to stop the penalty. No, they're not, so once again, Yellow um, is kind of doing the opposite of what I just talked about, right? Um, they're able to actually take that really long hold uh, to be able to to have the penalties work in their favor. Now, right now, Booyah Bomb does go off this 10 attack. Do they know he's there? Seems like they do. Will he win this one-on-one -on -one versus the Brella? It looks like not, as the Brella's going to be able to take off that pick. His teammates didn't seem aware of it, but they, in the end, they weren't able to take him out. And this is a big hold for Blue right now. Lots of picks. Uh, they're working towards specials. The Brella's close. The Mini has it. And the other two should be there pretty soon. So they, this is actually going to be a very dangerous situation for uh, Yellow going into the uh, overtime situation right now. Blue has tons of specials. Missiles go off. Inkstorm goes off. Booyah Bomb's going to be ready too. This is going to be very difficult for Yellow to get a penalty. Uh, Booyah Bomb definitely puts an end to that. And yeah, that is definitely going to be uh, the game for Blue. I can't really see this going in any other way. Those specials were basically impossible to work off of. Yellow would have had to go for like one big... One big strike and take you. I'm not even sure how they how they could have won that. That really came down to uh to 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 being wiped in that end game situation, right? Ah, and none of my bomb range shoes look as nice as I want them to. Let's see uh let's see if we got anything ninja squid that's more appealing to me. I'm gonna probably have to make the shirt later. I got I gotta try some of this stuff on. Man, if I can get that Ninja Squid, that would be tight. That'd be real tight. Yeah, whatever. I'm gonna have to. 
I'm gonna have to look at some more of that later. All right, so is this three one or two one? I think it's two one. What do we what do we have so far? We had Arowana yellow, Port blue, Mako blue. Okay, so it looks like it looks like blue just might win this. Um, but we're going to the humpback. Going to what looks like the final game because YouTube means spoilers. I could probably have some kind of layout that deals with that, but but, but we going in. All right, so um, expect the cons from both sides. Nothing is a surprise right now. Um, Stick with that ten attack every single game. And I don't know if the ten attack's really been that much of a problem. There has been a lack of ability to take zone, but I, I mean, what's a Kent's attack really gonna do in comparison? I mean, I guess vanilla shot is your like I need a splatter shot that can take zone, uh, as opposed to um, as opposed to the inkjet. Right now, early um, early control from yellow. Blue uh, ends up getting a pick and the um, and like the immediate penalty. That's kind of been a, uh, a, a kind of a common occurrence right now. This mini does get a pick. Bomb rush going off on zone, but bomb rush gets taken out. Someone else gets taken out. Yellow members forced to jump back. Everybody gets to jump back this time though, which has actually not been the case. That mini tends to want to stay in and keep fighting, even though he's running a uh, quick jump on his build. Now let's see how. The situation ends up playing out. All right, missile only gets one person. Inkjet going off. Mini pressuring the Brella big time. Oh, nice support from the Inkjet right there. Does he get the pick? He does. Oh, uh, that that Inkjet was huge. That one on one would not have been won without that Inkjet intervening right there. So that's a really good use of the Inkjet. I think that that. Uh, I mean, it looks like Yellow is going to lose this in the end, but that Inkjet seems to be fine. Firefin doing his thing, jumping out. Booyah Bomb on zone. Picks on both sides. Yellow holds the zone, though. Missiles go off. Did he miss the second target again? I mean, it's hard to tell in spectator mode, but it looks like that might have been twice in a row where he just didn't get multiple people to missiles when he had them in his reticle. And that's annoying. Uh, well, we do get lead for yellow right now. As they do continue to hold, blue does not get a penalty yet. This mini just trying to paint zone. Gets flanked by the pro. He died so fast I thought it was a snipe. Pro's overpowered. Please nerf. Alright, 3v3 situation in mid, kind of a little bit of neutral. Pick for blue. Another pick for blue? No? Um, I'm not really sure what happened to that, uh, the person over there to our left. But uh, a lot of just neutral situation right now as blue does get the better group up. They do get a pick and they do push forward. Here's the uh, zone control for them. Special's coming soon then for yellow. They're going to get baller first. Let's see how they use it. Slasher Deco in mid. Going to use that baller to chase down some enemies. Going to try to break that Brella Shield but gets taken out by the pro's assistance. And um, while they do get the penalty there, it looks like they might not get the hold for too long. Let's see how that ends up working out. And right now, I've, I've definitely been seeing blue with better teamwork in this humpback game. So this actually is the last game. And we don't get the set, uh, you know, ended early for us. I think that we kind of credit a lot of uh, blue's victory towards those moments of teamwork where we saw yellow getting split up and stuff like that. Also, hi, Micah. Sorry, I haven't been paying attention. I've actually been commentating, so I haven't been looking at chat that much. Hope you enjoyed it anyway, though. Um, all right, so we have this inkjet getting another pick. So honestly, this ten attack's been been pretty inspirational so far. I think that these have been a lot of really good inkjet plays. And uh, right now we see yellow pushing up the slash deck, though, kind of by himself. The ten attack and the mini still kind of chilling in zone. I don't really know what the intention is here. The slash gets picked off of being his, the only one forward. Now the tenant tries to push forward, but at the time he does that, he has some members behind him. He's going to get taken out by multiple people here. Maybe the mini comes in to assist. He gets the revenge pick. Booyah Bomb on zone, though. Mini not going to be able to deal with that necessarily. Uh, Inkstorm going off. Yeah, all kinds all kinds of mispositioning there from Yell at the end. I'm not sure what the mini and the tenant tech were thinking by not pushing up. The Slash Deco, Slash Deco is basically getting taken out as a free pick for blue. Free control for them. Slash Deco once again tries to do something in zone. The mini being dealt with on the left side of our screens by the Brella. As he, uh, the Brella eventually wins the one on one. So the Slasher is going to have to deal with this. Now, this is kind of bad for Yellow, right? They, they can't really get set up. Blue's pushing up. There's just a fire fin in zone. The Slasher deck could be forced to move back and take care of this mini. I think that honestly, Yellow should. In these situations, I like to hard commit to, to the opposite side of where that flank is in your base and just do the same thing there. You know, do a little bit of a base trade. Um, you know, you have more members in mid, so you can be more effective at making the base trade let you control mid, and just make sure that you get, like, a special or two out of it. Oh, look at that jump out 
from the Slasher Deco. This is going to be lead, though, for Blue. This is Yellow's last chance. Only 30 seconds left on the clock and very little time for this penalty. Bomb Rush does get control. Not that much of a penalty, however. Uh, so Blue is going to look to, to ha really have to do something. It looks like something happened. A pick over there to the right. The Pro gets another pick. He looks like he might get a third one. Will they get the quad? Yeah, that's an effective wipe right there in the last 10 seconds of the game. Definitely going to Blue as Yellow just gets taken out. And yeah, this is basically impossible. And that's going to be good game um, for Blue Team. We'll see if we can use a little Google Translate to see exactly who this team was. Um, because, like I said, I only recognize Japanese players by their uh, their open rec avatars. Alrighty. A bunch of shit I don't know. Are those, uh... Milk Rape. That's great. Um... We're gonna give that the hard reset. I'm gonna give it a hard reset. So, um, so it looks like these might be some Twitters. I can go check them out later. But I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. So, uh, thanks everybody for watching. This one's going up on YouTube. Of course, um, I'm going to be streaming the speed ladder on my account tomorrow. Um, I got the stream assets almost done. This is gonna be getting finished up today. We did some network tests, and everything seems great. Uh, I'm I'm really nervous and really excited and really looking forward to speed ladder too. I really hope that. Everything goes like the first one did. I hope that everybody likes it. And I hope that it really takes off. Um, we have some more announcements to make as well during it. So, um, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all later. And this has been pretty fun. I think I'm going to start doing this. I think I'm going to start doing commentary of Grand Finals and then doing analysis of some of these matches over the weekend and stuff like that. Uh, and then doing some normal coffees where I play uh, and try to get more scrims uh, uploaded and available to you guys as well. So... Uh, thanks a lot, guys, and I will um, see you later.